cats and kittens, and thanks for checking out another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm happy to bring you issue number 78, Saturn Girl. And with this figure, we round out the trio that founded the Legion of Superheroes. Yay! Uh, a great group of characters who, unfortunately, at least I feel, were not represented as well as they could have been in this series, but of course we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are aware of Saturn Girl, you may know her from appearances on Superman the Animated Series, as well as Justice League the Animated Series. She was also one of the stars of the unfortunately short-lived Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes Animated Series, or Superman and the Legion of Superheroes. I always want to call it Superboy because it was supposed to be Superboy, but they changed it to Superman at the last minute. Anyway, she's also appeared in Flesh and Blood on the television show Smallville, which again was a really great appearance from the Legion. They were in a couple episodes, if I remember, and I love their costumes in that, in that show. I thought they were really uh, clever, very appropriate. For those of you who do not know Saturn Girl, as I said, she's a founding member of the Legion of Superheroes. She's from the 31st century, and she's a telepath, but we'll cover all of that and more, of course, in the magazine, which we'll look at first. It'll tell us everything we need to know about Saturn Girl, also known as Imra Ardeen. And then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's another one like the two previous Legion members, Cosmic Boy and Lightning Lad, that I'm just really torn about. Love the character, love some of the things going on with the figure, but overall, it's a little disappointing. We'll get there eventually. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy issue number 78 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Saturn Girl. First up, the character section. Dean, who was born in the 31st century and lives on the largest moon that orbits around the planet Saturn, known as Titan, where her people colonized. The Titanian people are also natural-born telepaths, but Imra proved to be one of the most powerful. At a young age, she was taken by the government to be formally educated on how to use her powers at Titan Academy. On the trip to Metropolis, Imra overheard the thoughts of terrorists who were on the plane, planning to assassinate one of the galaxy's wealthiest businessmen, a man named R.J. Brand. Using her telepathic abilities, she reached out to two other superpowered teens who were on the flight, Rock Crin and Garth Rands, and together the teenagers rescued the billionaire, and a grateful R.J. Brand convinced the teens to use their powers to help fight crime across the galaxy. RJ even helped fund a full-blown ad campaign that sought out superpowered teenagers from across the galaxy to join the newly formed Legion of Superheroes. We also discover that Emma's telepathic abilities continued to grow during her time with the Legion, allowing her to link minds together so they could all communicate, astral project herself, and even take over other people's minds to use their bodies however she chose. Imra's superpowers aren't the only defense she has. In addition to being extremely skilled with her telepathic and telekinetic abilities, she is also versed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. We also learn that Imra became romantically involved with Legion co-founder and teammate Garth Rands, also known as Lightning Lad, after he sacrificed himself to save her from a deadly blast Lightning Lad was resuscitated by his teammates after they used their own bodies as lightning rods to recharge him. After he was successfully revived, the pair confessed their feelings for one another, eventually got married, and had twin boys.
the last couple pages bring us up to speed with Saturn Girl, at least at the time of the publication, we learn that she loses her twin boys after they're kidnapped by agents of the evil Dark Side. Not long after this, she loses her home planet of Titan when the moon is destroyed by scientists who are trying to create a time portal. members of the Legion who has had the honor of traveling back in time to meet the man that inspired the teenage heroes, Clark Kent, also known as Superman. Next we look at a couple of Saturn Girl's classic stories. First up, Legion of Superheroes Volume 5, Issue 24. And this issue shows how powerful Imra's telepathic abilities truly are. When the Legionnaires land on the Kryptonian colony of Kandor, they accidentally activate a device known as a Phantom Zone Projector, and Imra can sense the mind of someone who is an innocent prisoner inside of this prison zone. There's also a Legionnaire there known as Phantom Girl, who can astral project her body into other dimensions. So, Imra speaks through the astral projection form of Phantom Girl in order to communicate with the hero known as Monel, a friend of Superman's who is accidentally trapped inside this Phantom Zone. They successfully release him, he joins up with the team, and it's a great issue that's really a lot of fun. We also look at Legion of Superheroes Volume 6, Issue 1. And this is a great issue that shows Imra's commitment to not only the Legion, but also to her role as a wife and mother, when she not only loses the planet of Titan when it's destroyed, she also loses her twin sons Graham and Garridan, who are apparently kidnapped by agents of Darkseid on the planet Apocalypse. She springs into action, alerting the rest of the Legionnaire as to what's going on. She figures out why the planet Titan was destroyed and how, and she also tracks down her twin boys with her husband, Lightning Lad, and his sister, Lightning Lass. It's an action-packed, dramatic tale that's definitely worth checking out. Saturn Girl's Friends and Foes section features her friends and Legion co-founders Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy, as well as the villainous Darkseid. Finally, the iconography section talks about a few of the other Legion of Superhero members and the planets that they hail from. First, we visit the planet Nal Tor, whose entire population has the ability to see into the future. One of the most powerful seers on the planet was a girl named Nura Nal, who joined the Legionnaires and became known as Dream Girl. We next meet a girl named Lorna Durgo, who hails from the planet Karg and has the ability to split into three. After joining the Legionnaires, she took the code name Triplicate Girl. It's also revealed that an alien who hails from the planet Dorla, known as Ren Daggle, has shape-changing abilities and is actually the billionaire Earthman known as R.J. Brand. On the harsh desert planet of Talok 8, we meet a race of people whose memories are passed down genetically from one generation to the next, including a girl named Tasmia Malor, who joined the Legion as Shadow Lass. Finally, the planet Thar, another harsh desert planet, whose inhabitants have learned to slow down the molecules around them in order to create cold, including Breck Bannon, who became the Legionnaire known as Polar Boy. And here we have Saturn Girl, Imra Ardeen, and boy, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Legion, guys. You have to understand that. I love the Legion of Superheroes, I love the comics, loved the cartoon show, canceled way too soon. And I love these characters, and I just don't like these figures very much. It's so unfortunate. Uh, and the biggest reason for that is the costume choices. They chose to put them all in their Silver Age costumes. I get it. It looks uniform when they're together, but I would have preferred pretty much any costumes other than these, I miss the Legion uh, logo, I miss the Legion flight ring, I don't know. I really do love the pose though, that's the thing with, with most of these, with all three of the Legion that we've done so far, there are so many really cool things, like the cool, the good things are really good, but the bad just seems to outweigh them. 
the really good on her though has to be the pose. I, I love it. I love how her left hand is at her temple, like she's using her mental abilities and her right hand is guiding those telepathic and telekinetic abilities. Uh, I like her hair sculpt a lot. I think it's great. I love how it flows over her shoulders in some spots. And the paint application is nice. The costume is accurate for what it is. Um, and you can see she's very scantily clad as well. She's actually the most scantily clad female in the series, unless you count the Blackest Night, Brightest Day. Some people don't. Um, if you count that, she's not. But if you do, she is the most scantily clad. Also, I've been corresponding with one of the subscribers here, Enrique, and he asked me recently who the least attractive female was, the most disappointing female figure in the series, because Wonder Girl just came out, and there was a lot of... I had bad feelings about that figure, and I have to say she's actually not as bad as this one, unfortunately. Uh, Saturn Girl may be the worst in the regular series, not counting Blackest Night, Brightest Day. There's someone in that series that has her beat, but if you're counting just the regular line, unfortunately, I think Saturn Girl wins the award for the worst. Raven, I have a newfound respect for you. I'm so sorry I ever criticized that figure as much as I did. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more here about Saturn Girl, though, in just a moment. Saturn Girl stands atop the classic DC logo, and the underside of her base features her name and serial number. To get a sense of scale, here she is beside her Legion co-founders Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy. And finally, a group shot with all the members of the Legion, including honorary members Superman and Supergirl. Saturn Girl is another mixed bag for me. I, I like some of the things that are here. I'm a really big fan of the Legion, so I'm sort of partial to them. It's just another unfortunate case of what were they thinking, you know, as far as the costume goes, as far as the overall look of this figure. We'll start, as always, with the good. Um, even though this isn't my favorite costume, it is accurate. The paint is nice as far as color goes. I really like it. It's got this nice fleck to it. Um, I do like the sculpt for the most part. And I really like the pose. The pose on her is great. It's exactly what I would expect a telepath to look like as far as how her powers are coming through. You can see the boots, the paint, and the sculpt. It's really nice. Um, you know, there's great muscle tone, there's great definition. I like the fact that she has the, the boots on, not necessarily high heels, but there is some definition to the soles. And you can see the paint is nice. There's a flecking to it that's not too heavy. It looks sort of space agey, like it's from the future. Uh, I do like the Saturn logo on her midsection. It's raised up and it's molded, and it is a nice metallic gold paint. Her, the flesh tone is really nice. She's not too pale. She's got a little bit of a tan. It's not coming through very well here, but it's a good color for the skin. The hands, both hands and arms, are very nice. Again, that goes back to the pose. I like how her one arm is out, and they did every finger on that hand. They're all sort of separated, spreading out as though she's using her powers. And then her left hand is also really nice. The whole arm, again, nice paint job on that. And I like how her hand is to her temple, as though she's focusing her powers and her mental abilities to do something, whatever that something is. So I dig that. Finally, I really like the hair sculpt. Really nice great uh, flow to it. I like how it's over her shoulders and running down her back. Lots of nice highlighting. The color is also pretty good, actually. I would have liked it to be a little bit more blonde, but it's nice. There's lots of good highlighting and things on, uh, going on through the hair sculpt. On to the bad. Oh boy, here we go. Miss the fact that there's no Legion logo. Miss the fact that there's no Legion flight ring. It's like making a Green Lantern figure without the Green Lantern symbol or a power ring on their finger. I just don't understand it. And of course, that goes into the fact that I hate the costume. I do not like the Silver Age costumes. Um, other things that are actually wrong with the figure that I do not like. Um, mine has a chip on the extended hand. I'm kind of okay with that because, again, it shows it's handcrafted and at least the fingers aren't gnarled biggest issues I have, aside from the fact that I hate the costume, is there is really sloppy paint, lots of bleeding edges. Also, you can see the seams of the mold on the sides of the body, which just looks sloppy to me. Finally, do not like the head, the, the head sculpt, the facial sculpt. The hair is nice, but the face is terrible. Her face looks very flat. It looks like they had to paint on her eyes and her mouth, like they're not molded or sculpted at all. Uh, it's unattractive and her face is bleeding into her hair, so her face looks fat and wide, and her neck looks gigantic because of yet more sloppy paint. It's just an unattractive figure, like Lightning Lad. It just doesn't look like Imra to me. Finally, the ugly. Besides the fact that the costume is ugly and the facial sculpt is ugly, you have to watch out for that extended hand. As I said, mine has some chipping, but at least there aren't gnarled fingers. You want to watch that if you have the ability to check before you purchase, I would recommend doing so. 
Overall, Saturn Girl is just disappointing to me. Like the other two members of the Legion that have come before her, there's just too much wrong with these figures for me to really like it. I don't like the costumes, I, I don't like the fact that the Legion logo is not there. I, I get what they're going for, I do, they're all wearing the Silver Age, and they don't look awful when you have them together on the shelf. But I just don't think it's something that you could pick up if you're a casual fan. I think you really have to be a diehard Legion fan or collecting every figure in this series like I am to pick this one up. Otherwise, I think she's skippable. And as I said before, I think that she is probably the worst female in the series. So for that, one, that, for that reason alone, I think she's not worth checking out. I think you should probably skip her over and, and save your money to invest in other figures like the one that will be coming up next. But I do want to thank you for tuning in to my review here of Saturn Girl. I wish it was a bit more of a cheerful review, but what can you do? Please stay tuned very quickly for a teaser trailer for the next issue in the series. We're going to bring it back up here, turn it around. It's a special edition, ladies and gentlemen. It's a creepy one, it's a mystical one, and it's one I've been looking forward to. Please, so please stay tuned for that. As always, I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, aka Jadoist Friends. Thanks for watching.